Hey everyone, welcome back. We're playing some more Talia Ziggs today. I love this deck. I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm such a silly, like, content creator. Because obviously I'm not very big, so I kind of just like play what I want to play. Rather than worrying about like, you know, making sure I play a perfectly new deck every day. And like, since I enjoy the more competitive side of the game, I like practicing like the same decks that I want to like play in the tournaments and stuff. Uh, and so yeah, we're just going to be having back on some Talia Ziggs today. This is Prodigy's List. And it has pretty much everything you'd want in Talia Ziggs list in terms of fun factor, as well as, like, actual, like, consistency. Uh, over the past few months, I'd kind of been messing around with, like, what I wanted to run. At one time, I had two Absolvers, no Herald Omegas, no Arsenal. But this has a good mix of all of them. Triple Ra Rackberry Shepherd is really interesting. And, I don't know, I just love the deck. It feels very flexible into a lot of good, like, mid-range matchups. You can you can go really wide with um, the Rockbear Shepherd. Copying that landmark, you know, getting your endless defouts and try to just get like a whole bunch of like five fives and five threes. You can also uh, go for a big combo kill to go over the top if you're trying to face like a deck like Aatrox Kane. You can go like uh, Talia, copying Preservarium to really, really dig for your key cards and hit Herald Omegas and Absolver, things like that. Katarina Gwen, though, is another one. Like uh, the aggro matchups are also really fun because uh, I think it was Alan on the. Uh, on the casters throughout seasonals was talking about like how fun it is to play against aggro decks in Legends of Materia because like the pass initiatives and everything are just so interesting and Katarina Gwen is one of those where I really really love the matchup uh so I'll probably actually just ship off Talia here as much as I love the card I don't think she's probably a keep yeah this is pretty good so uh, my thought here is I'm going to play the inventive chemist first because turn two we already have our play if we need to to like shoot a redeem prodigy uh, and the Predicts always have, like, more value later in the game. I'll save this just in case there's something more important we need to block. But if they open attack, I'm happy to take the block as well. Yeah, okay. So, like, our curve, our curve is looking really good here. We can go, uh, turn 3, Endless Devout. And turn 4, have Ancient Prep. Look for maybe Talia already. And have right there Arcane to shoot a champion. That is obviously fantastic. Double Rider Arcane is really, really good because it hits both of their champions. But our deck does not do a good job of dealing with uh, Eternal Dancers because we don't have any easy ways to do that unless we hit Rock Hopper to give it vulnerable. I'll just take my damage here. There's no reason for us not to. We can't give anything vulnerable, so we'll just pass. I'm not sure what they're keeping of the mana for. I imagine it might be like Katarina, be able to cast the blade, be able to keep, play the... Play the um, Okay, well, GG. That's a fun little first game. Uh, I'll leave this one in. The, I don't. I don't usually edit my videos too much, anyways. But I'll leave it in because uh, I think you guys saw we had a really good start and like what you can look for in the Mulligan, as well as just like just talking about some fun stuff. I want to play a whole bunch of Magic too. I um. I don't know. I always feel so silly like with what I want to make contact on content on because I love 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 Legends of Terror. It is like my favorite card game. But I still play like a lot of Magic the Gathering too. And something I might just play Magic on stream and just like not upload the, those streams to YouTube. But then on the other hand, I'm kind of like I'm not good enough to make money off of Legends of Runeterra in the tournaments. Obviously, like maybe I would be if I actually put more time into it. Diego Nora. Um, but like Magic: The Gathering has like just such a significantly higher viewership, and especially other games like League of Legends and Overwatch have more. But in a small community like Legends of Runeterra, there's obviously like a much higher chance of me becoming somewhat well-known when there aren't quite as many huge content creators. So I'm always, like, never sure what to dedicate my time to because the new season for, um... I don't want to play Rock Hopper into Wild Feast. The new season just started out of Magic, and I was thinking of playing that until... playing that more until the new update comes out for Legends of Interior because that looks, like, uber dope. I don't know if I want to predict or play Rock Hopper. Because Rock Hopper feels kind of bad. I mean, going turn 3, there's maybe a key unit. And if they just play Vile Feast, I think we're fine. Because we'll just be able to get an easy pick off of Endless Devout, I suppose. I don't know. This doesn't feel great. This doesn't feel great. Maybe it'd be better just to save the mana, but... I'll play our cards. We have a good open attack. Junk Crusher. Okay, I'm also pretty happy to hit that. They might play Withering Whale, because I haven't seen, like, Nora Viego lists. So that could be kind of sad to run out in the Savannah and then just give the extra kill. 
But we do want this guy dying at some point, right? So. What if I go here? What if I don't give them the kill? Or the easy damage here, and it just makes this, like... Hmm. I don't know, I think we will want it to die, because we're gonna need Talia landmarks, valuable Talia landmarks to copy. Pokestick, that's fine. I don't think that's particularly useful for them. I'll play Ancient Prep first just to see if we need to save mana. Yeah, we have a ton of chump blockers, so I'm just gonna look for a card draw. Uh, I think we probably have to go big this matchup, like just get wide with like our endless Deva our risen devouts, I should say. Maybe a rock bear shepherd, rather than focusing solely on getting our champions leveled up and buffed up because they just died of vengeance too easily or many more even. I'd love to hit Talia soon. So I'll just pass because we're going to need the board space if we happen to top deck Talia. Okay. Well, now what do we do? This is kind of sad. We don't really have anything going on here. So I think I'll just get in and maybe shoot Nora. If they let us. What seems to be the problem? I'd be surprised if- yeah, I was going to say I'd be surprised if they don't take the Junk Construct block here. Or we can just drop the bomb to kill Nora too. Which I think I'll do that instead of Ready Darkane. Because we still have two more turns for these to go off before we have to use our Ready Darkane. Or we could just try to kill Viego. Each on the first time an ally dies. Hmm. Is it worth it, do you think? We're never, ever, 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 ever killing Viego otherwise. Which is actually an interesting tech. I guess you could put a copy of Minimorph into your Ziggs. But it's just not really in your game plan at all. So it's an interesting thought. But I don't think it's worth it. This is really bad if they have like a glimpse. But we, we're getting landmarks down. I don't know. Oh, they glimpsed their own Vigo. Wait, they could have glimpsed something else, couldn't they? Like if they glimpsed their fade blade troller, wouldn't they have gotten like to keep their Vigo? Maybe they don't think it's worth it because we'd be getting a fearsome anyways next turn. So maybe it's not really a big deal. Alright, Talia's still good. We just would need to get rid of... Okay, Ziggs is also good. We can't play Ziggs plus Herald of the Magus this turn. So I think we're going to play Herald of the Magus first. Get an easy Fearsome blocker because we don't want to sacrifice Ziggs, obviously. They did tap out of Vengeance, so we'd have been able to stick Ziggs for a turn. But I don't think it really matters. I will block because it makes this guy die to either the 5-3 or Ziggs attack. Okay, that's also fine. And I don't want to take a ton of damage. But, uh... Like, this guy is probably going to just die into this anyways. This is also a good blocker against the Ziggs. Do we need board space? I think we do. Yeah. Hmm, because then we just play Ziggs next turn. Hmm, okay. I don't know. I don't know if this is fine or not. We're saving a little bit of damage. This guy could save more damage later on, so I don't really think that feels good. But this lets us play Rockhopper, and then Ziggs next turn gets to kill something, maybe? Or, like, gets to ping, right? And with the vulnerable, it makes it really awkward for them, so that they don't really have much to do, hopefully. They are also scaling really well with the Hydrovine eventually just hitting Viego. Like, Viego Atrocity is really bad, so we do need to be careful of our health total, or our life total. Oh, that summons the mist, that's right. Okay, that's kind of awkward then. That is actually really clever. I, I don't know why I hadn't even thought of that until now, that the the, the Hydrovine, or the Encroaching Mists count as... Oh, that's so good. That's like actually a massive high roll. That's really cool. I love Nora, man. Oh my goodness. So, Ziggs probably just gets vengeanced. Or mini morphed even. If they offer the pass, I will absolutely take it because we're dealing five damage on the ping. Okay, sure, can't do much about that. We're not really taking a ton of damage next turn. 
we'll have four units on board. But I'd also like to keep space for Talia to copy a landmark. We just won't have any landmarks on board. So we'll just get Endless Spot down as an easy blocker. Yeah, this one definitely feels kind of sad. We didn't really get our threatening units before they were able to establish Hydrovine. And so now they're just bigger than us. And like, obviously we never were able to deal with Nora. We tried to kill Viego instead, which I think was probably the right play. But because like, yeah, like as soon as they get this Viego, like what are we supposed to do? Now we pretty much only win if we hit like Talia, get some attacks in maybe, and Ziggs burn out. Because at this point it's kind of doomed. They're going to keep getting huge units from Nora. The Hydra, everything's going to be like massive. So we're in trouble. Uh, I can try to kill this guy. Maybe set him up for a pokey stick. Fuck Viego. Just save as much damage as possible. And we have to block here or else we die to atrocity. I guess we could just quicksand and kill Nora now. That's probably the play, right? How do we want to do this? Do we want to maneuver this around any other way? I don't know. I think I'm just going to take two extra damage, I suppose. Ah, I mean, Viego is probably going to level, right? Sure. I don't know. I think this one's kind of over at this point. Our opponent has like a billion cards in hand. We have Inventive Chemist. This one's probably over. I think I might just scoop it up. Interesting matchup though. Definitely a cool deck from our opponent. I think that might have been better if we were able to find a more aggressive mulligan. Like a Rock Bear Shepherd into Talia might be good. Rock Bear Shepherd dies to Quietus though. Not a huge fan of any of this either. Just dies to Vile Feast. So is the Rock Hopper very good? They have lots of the sacrificial units, so I don't think Rock Hopper is very good. I don't like to play Ancient Prep on turn one when we can, but uh, it just gets our early game fixed up. I don't want any of that, I don't think. Quicksand is actually interesting. Maybe we could take Quicksand, but we're not gonna have good blockers on for a, on board for a while. I want to play this one. We can copy it with Talia. We might be able to outgrind them if we go late game. Uh, we're also going to need to be able to kill Kindred probably on turn four. I'll play Endless Devout instead of Ziggs. I don't want him to be prone to dying early on. A true I mean, that's fine. They just wasted a, a Frostbite effect. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I'll just get in. I'll set up my landmark if they want to take the trade. Okay, that was smart on them, I think. The Just Ash, okay. Hmm, well now what do we do? I think we probably just let this slide for now. Ash isn't our biggest threat. I'm more scared of Kindred at the moment. We can, we can spare some damage. Our Endless Devout will die, so we might as well save some damage and pick off their 3-1. And we're not really sad if they waste a freeze on into the 2 2, right? Like a brittle steel or something, even. So I'll play Art of the Arcane first. Maybe get them to use some mana so they can't kill Talia this turn. If they have like a troll chant, 
Uh, at least it's not roasting us in combat as well. And like, they can't really use Mist's Call. I don't know if they run Mist's Call. But they'd be taking a risk. Really? I guess that's fine. 4 mana, 4-4? Four, four? Sure. But now they pretty much don't have a way to kill Talia this turn, hopefully. Hmm, Rock Bear Shepherd? Is that any good? Uh, I mean, it's a little bit of a 2 for 1. They get a nice unit. They get rid of our dude, but... Clytus at least won't be there to kill our Rock Bear Shepherd. So we could go Rock Bear Shepherd into leveled Ziggs. Feels pretty decent. And then they can only Vengeance one of our champions. Tilly is leveled, so they might be scared to do that right away. Also, more Preservium is really, really good. We hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to find a second Talia. Actually, what if we go, um, if they Vengeance, we play... Oh, wait, no, we can't play First Red Negation. Oh, they go Quietus. So interesting. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy to swing in here first. Because Ziggs, I don't think I want to swing in here. He'll only be a 4-5. And so he'll lose to a... Eh, he won't die to a Troll Chant. But I think I'm happy to just take my attack first and see what happens. Rats. If only we had Ancient Hourglass. Okay. Uh, that's fine. I'll just play our Endless Devout then. Get a blocker set up. So what they do this turn? They killed our Rackbar Shepherd and our Talia. That's fine. We have way, 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 way more cards in hand. We just don't have any way to deal with more of their champions. So. Uh, I mean, obviously it just depends on what their hand is. But there's a good chance we can set up a really good turn soon. We won't tap out of uh, right over the arcane. Cool. Okay, well, we can play first Ziggs now. I think I'm okay to attack. Instead of a drop the bomb on something. I mean, that's another two cards for one. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to use Absolver. Uh, I'll save second in case they have... Oh, no, I have, to, I have to use the second one. No, they have to have another freeze. Wow, okay. That's kind of crazy. I'm also happy with this, because it gives me a, a card I actually want to destroy with Desert Naturalist once I play Drop the Bomb. Or, yeah, we can just go like this. Yeah, this is fine. And destroy the, this one. And now our board's getting out of hand, unless they have Ruination, of course. But if they have Ruination... If they have Ruination, we just play Red right Negation. Whoa, okay. It's not a card I was expecting. No way, do they have another freeze? Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. I'm okay with losing this lane mark. At this point, I think we just push a ton of damage on the open, right? They only have one card in hand. We have some more draw coming. Uh, two, you know, denies, so we're feeling pretty good. As long as they don't hit, like, I don't even know what they could hit. <laughs> Man, another freeze. Okay. They're definitely drawing well here to stay in it. It's a little sad. 
We do have another six though, of course. A second howling abyss. Pokey stick? Okay, that's good. That, that'll kill Rhymefang Wolf if they try to go after our Ziggs again. Hail of Lomagus, that can finish it off. Ooh, that's actually pretty cool. This should have a hard time killing us here. We only need one of our units to hit next turn. Oh, well we can't do much about that now, can we? I'm gonna go for the wolf instead of face. I don't know if that's right or not, but. Wait, why do it this way? Okay. Now you lose one of your champions if you attack again. Sure. Never tried this they have another harsh winds. <laughs> I don't think that would save them, but it'd be funny. I'm ready the arcane, okay. Oh, you know what I actually didn't pay attention to? I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look because I wasn't... I'm not actually sure. We could have played Desert Naturist onto their Howling Abyss, but I don't think we had Desert Naturist in hand when they played Howling Abyss. I think we played it before that, so I'm not 100% sure on that. Oh my gosh, I'm sitting so like sideways in my chair. Oh, congrats to our 2022 America's World Finalists. That's so cool, I haven't seen that one before. What is this amalgamation of cards? I'm pretty happy to keep Red the Arcane, for sure. Actually, what if we just go like this? This is actually a pretty decent hand, I think, against this deck. I don't think we were looking to be uber aggressive. I think we'd rather set up like going wide. Alright, pretty happy to play Preservarium 1 here. That sets up really well now. We can go Rockbird Shepherd, turn 4 Preservarium, and then copy it with Talia. We'll be drawing a lot of cards if we do that, so maybe it's not worth it, but. Uh, they can't play Quietus, and they tap out anyways, so pretty happy to get Rockbird Shepherd down. We're both kind of playing slow here, but it's working out alright, I think. I might just play Ziggs here, to be honest. We have a landmark to copy with Talia. Oh, never mind. No, we don't. Because if we play this, let's go a flip at the turn and, and we won't have anything to copy. Hmm. So do we get a little bit aggressive here? Play Ziggs? Ziggs into drop the bomb? Would be four, five, six damage on a Braum, so it would be enough to kill Braum if they play Braum. Ah, uh, I think I'll play Preservarium. I really think we want to copy the Hibernating Rat Bear with Talia next turn. To be honest. Okay, well he got buffed from Spirits Unleashed anyways. I forgot about that, so that's not enough to kill. Ah. Uh, 
with Ziggs anyways, so. Big chunky junk construct. I think that's fine. By the way, Spirits Unleashed is such a dope card. <laughs> Heck yeah, Stone Weaving is such a cool card, by the way. Love the artwork. I was I made my dad watch all the League of Legends cinematics last night, like um the Call Warriors, things like that. The new one was so sad. I was so disappointed. I was expecting like one of the cool ones. It was still like such a nice animation, otherwise, but just because like, you're expecting one of, like the normal car or uh, like cinematics, it was a little bit disappointing. Um, but I made him watch all of them last night. It was so good. I love like Sejuani and Talia. And I think Ezreal is like such a fun character in that too. In the um, in the cinematics, they're fun. Yeah, we could take the block. Hope they don't hit the portal off the top. Because this guy still trades with the four four later on. The next turn, what do we do? Maybe Rock Hopper. Rock Hopper into Ziggs. No, Ziggs into Rock Hopper. How do we want to do this? I think we'll play Ziggs first. Because he'll be leveled, that's good. And then we can decide if we want to ready the arcane something. They did the portal. They got squeaker, okay. Yeah, I think with six mana left over, we're pretty happy here. No, I'll, I'll play Rockhopper first. Because they'll want to overwrite something. And I don't, we won't have the space for the Roiling Stains afterwards. Herald of the Megas would have been a really good job too. That's probably probably what we'll we'll look for with Ancient Prep. We're pushing a ton of damage here. Herald of the Megas is probably our best like counter to their spirits unleashed here, just to get our guys bigger than theirs. Oh? Entomb? I don't think I want that, but am I gonna red negation it? I don't think so. Because there's a chance we can copy it with our Talia <laughs> if our Talia dies. So I'm like, actually, I'll take that. We'll get in here for some damage. Because yeah, we have one Talia in hand, so like, if they kill Talia, it's actually kind of funny. Okay, clearing the board's pretty good. They're going to have to develop or else they die on our next attack. Setting up another Spirits Unleashed, maybe? That's a good point, why we should have attacked with this. But it was such an easy block for Braum. I mean, we have some pretty big cards coming up. I want to develop a unit in case they play... Buried and Ice, which I don't, I don't know if they do or not. Ooh, that's really good. I think I'll just take Ancient Hourglass. It's a little bit more efficient than Right of Negation, I suppose, for protecting one of our units. Their next attack, or our, our next attack turn, sorry, is really, really good. So we're only sad if they can, like, wipe these guys. If they go after the 5 1, though, we just uh, drop the bomb. I'd be happy to drop the bomb pokey stick too. But then he'd be leveled by then. No, no, he's not. He's only he's only taken one damage. Okay. Cool. Fun card, fun card. We can afford to use first Talia. Heck yeah. Wow, this is actually pretty good. What? I'm 
I think that's fine. Oh no, he'll, he'll have to take four damage. Uh, so I guess we let this go. And then just play right there, Kane? Yeah? Okay, I'm happy with this. Hmm. So now he'll be leveled. I think that's fine. We'll need to find another right of arcane to kill him, or just hope our champions run into him. We won't have enough to play Arsenal plus a protection spell next turn. So I'll set up this for our 3 1 to attack. And um, hopefully draw something important here. Oh, that's actually really good too. Actually, maybe not at the moment. We won't have any landmarks next turn. Okay, so we're fine. We have Ziggs and Tlee on board. Very good attack. No overwhelms, a little less threatening. But I think we still have a really good attack. Depending on what they do here, we could, um... Oh, wait. <laughs> That's actually really funny. Hold on a second. This gives him three Poros. That's actually hilariously funny. What if we do this? Cool. Yeah, all right. I've been waiting weeks to do this play. I haven't done this in so, so long. Look at this. <laughs> we get double Talia, and it deals like um, four damage from Ziggs next turn. Oh my gosh, that's so nasty. Plus we have right negation in case they have some crazy play this turn. Oh, there's zero health, that's so funny. Yeah, I always forget it's an exact copy. I don't think that particularly matters this turn, but it's just funny. Ten keywords, heck yeah. That's why they call him the Arsenal. Uh, I'll just block. I don't particularly care about this guy attacking next turn. We'll just play Inventive Chemist afterwards, I guess. I just don't want to take this much damage. And I think they'll have enough blockers anyways that the 2 damage probably won't be uber important. Nice! Okay, we get rid of Bomb. No more Poros. And look at this open attack, my goodness. I'll attack with our champions first. Look at this, this is gonna flood the stack, so they can't put anything on the stack. <laughs> that looks more like Tilly's landmark, our ultimate from League of Legends. Look, our Ziggs didn't even get to use his ability, that's so funny. Yeah, but I thought I actually would've put Ziggs first so we could deal a direct two damage. Why not, why not Frostbite Ziggs? Oh, I do have Frostbite, that's so funny. Like, if they had, like, an Entomb, or a uh, Puzzling Signpost, if we played some, I don't know, like, you know what I mean? They can't play an actual fast speed cards in the stack, that's so funny. Alright, good game. That was funny. <laughs> I mean, Ziggs isn't wrong there. We had about that many side effects in that last attack. 34,000. Oh, goodness. Um, who was I talking to in chat yesterday? 
Ah, uh, jeepers. I don't know. I can't remember the name. But, um, anyways, if you're listening, we were talking about, um... What were we talking about? Wow, I have no idea where my train of thought was going. One second. Let me recollect my thoughts. Recollect. I have no idea what I was saying. Never mind. I literally have, like, completely just blanked. Yeah, wow, that's, like, really weird. I was, like, so, I was so sad I didn't remember the name that I completely forgot where my chain of thought was going. Oh, well, maybe I'll think about it again. Okay, Gwen, Katarina, Elise. I am very happy to keep Absolver. Ziggs is fine. Dies to flock, so I don't think we'll keep him though, but he's like a fine blocker, but I'd rather just look for our endless devout. So I'll go turn one ancient prep, uh, rather than looking for inventive chemist, because if we don't try inventive chemist, we're really in a, in a troubling spot. So I'll play ancient prep to um get a 2-2 on their next attack. Hmm. Okay, I'll take Red Arcane. But yeah, we wanted, we really, really want Endless Devout, drop the bomb, and murder the Arcane in this matchup. Murder the Arcane kills Gwen, drop the bomb kills Katarina, and this Devout's just a good blocker. And so I'll pass here, because we have enough mana to play drop the bomb. Like, they're forced to develop, because otherwise, um, R2-2 just blocks the 3-2. Now I'll play drop the bomb, because it sets up a Murder the Arcane if they play champion, and they can't really open attack again. And they would open attack with the Fearsome, we'd be taking too much damage, so. We're okay. Uh, Gwen is the most awkward, because... Oh. Uh, what if I just play Endless Devout now? They'll get one, one free hit, but that's fine. Like, if they give us three and this three, we'd have to sacrifice both our blockers. But I don't think that's the end of the world. Oh, thank goodness. I don't know why they did that. I'm good to keep this guy alive at one health. Um, which I'd rather for now, rather than killing him, because next turn we wouldn't have enough mana really to play our units and ride the arcane. Ooh, Mark Harper's interesting. That stops him from developing a champion. And I'll just passively offer it, or if they just play tiny unit. Oh, that's interesting. Sure. Well, I'll take this time to get Preservarium down. I think we take this attack, right? Just kill it so Mark of the Isles doesn't do anything. Or just the Vile Feast, sure. This thing's still vulnerable, so it e dies easily to our champions later on. Ancient prep's not bad either. We definitely want a way to kill a champion. So we might just have to sacrifice Preservarium. No champs, very good still. If it's made of sand, I can light. And there's Katarina. No mana though, so uh, I'm pretty happy to, to destroy a mana gem here actually, I think. And just keep the jaw. This thing's vulnerable. So what if we just leave that on board? But this dies to Pokey Stick. I think we'll go like this. Plus this is this isn't a fearsome blocker for when this guy comes out later. And now we have another unit set up for our Rite of the Arcane. If they play another champion. They're down to two cards as well, so drawing feels really good. And Ziggs. Ziggs is Oh man. Okay, I think we'll play Ancient or Inventive Chemist first. See what they do. Keep up Red of the Arcane. Plus Ancient Prep. Hmm. Now I'm a little bit more scared. I'm only taking two damage if they open attack. So I'll pass. 
I think that's a fine pass. We're not taking enough damage on the open attack to threaten us. I don't think they play Decimate. If they play Double Decimate, I'd be a little more scared, but... Oh, Shunpo's actually kind of weird, huh? I'll take another Drop the Bomb to kill Katarina. We can just keep threatening their champions as soon as they play it, right? Like, there's no need for us to do it right now. Like, they have to play Shunpo on a unit. So we'll wait until we get some extra blockers on board. And they don't have any foyers on board, so Shunpo really isn't even that awful for us. This is a chance for me to leave my mark. Yeah, I'll happily take this attack. They could play Mark of the Isles plus Flock to kill our first Ziggs. Or they just take out the Devout, sure. That's fine. We can still kill Gwen this turn, and I don't think they will be able to do much about it. I'll just do this in case they have a spooky rally. I guess it's kind of awkward, because now they can just replay Gwen and attack next turn. Maybe I shouldn't have played Blackberry Shepherd there, that gave them a window to play Katarina. They're getting pretty low. They have lots of removal. Kind of cheap removal, not very like efficient, but... Alright, we got there, good game! All right, let's get one more. I always tap my foot and it bugs me crazy. It drives me crazy. Um, oh, heck yeah, the mirror match. All right, the mirror match is actually kind of interesting. This hand looks really nasty. Uh, I think I might just keep this all. I'll pitch six, he's more of a finisher. But this looks really good. I would love Endless Devout to be able to stop their own rock hoppers. Alright, we get in for two damage. Anyways, what was I saying again? Why do I keep losing my train of thought today? I don't know what I'm doing. What was I even talking about? My goodness, I, I hate when I do that. I got I got so excited at seeing Talia Ziggs. I think I want Rockhopper to have Vulnerable more than I want Endless Devout to have Vulnerable. Because Endless Devout can save a lot of damage when it blocks. Like, this this dies to Poke 6, so they're probably pretty happy to just leave this back. Uh, and so likewise, I will play Endless Devout before they play another uh, Rockhopper or something. I don't know if this is a good play in this match or not, but I feel like I go for it a lot, because it keeps their Unless Devout alive. Um, while getting it damaged so we can kill it whenever we need to. But I don't know, maybe it's fine to just like run both of ours into it, kind of like a mutual trade. Haha, <laughs> little did you know, we're not playing any units this turn. <laughs> we do have to play Tulia though, so that's kind of a shame. Our Drop the Bomb doesn't really kill any of their champions. I would love to find a, tip, a Preservarium. Oh, that's actually really good. I think I'll take this first instead of Talia. I think I'll take the extra 2 2 just in case. I'll destroy this. It won't give us a, a something to copy with Talia next turn unless we sacrifice our 3 3. Which we might do. But we get some pretty decent um, damage on board. Break both the Roiling Sands. I'll even, like, I don't even know that's good, right? Because it just like levels up their Ziggs faster. But we kind of need to get rid of them at some point, or else we're not getting our champions down very efficiently. Talia. Okay. 
Well, she's leveled. That's a little awkward. Because unless we find Pokestick, we're not really killing her. But we have to get in anyways, or else she won't be damaged. Like, we can go like this, I think. And if they take the block, until he lives at 1, and they run the risk of running the Pokestick. If they don't block, they take 5, and they're down to 8. Uh, and, and, like, if they do block, this goes down to 1 health, so they do get more damage off to the next turn. But I think it's just too much of a risk for them. Like, they can just kill either one anyways next turn. Rockbear Shepherd? That's actually really interesting here. Ooh, do we go Rock Bear Shepherd? Or just Slam Talia? Hold on, hold on. I, I need to do math. Uh, let's see here. We play Rock Bear Shepherd. Then what? We have a full board. So we'd have to have kill two of our units. Okay, I think this is fine. And then uh, next turn this will go down to two till you'll drop it to one. This sets up a pretty nice open attack for us. I don't know if it's worth it though. We'll pass and see what they do. We just don't have a very good open attack now. Hey Damien, what's up? Okay, I actually kind of want this. I kind of want my board to be a little bit clear. So we can copy it with Talia next turn. So is there any way for us to get these landmarks to pop next turn? If we destroy this, this goes down to 2, flips down to 1, then we copy with the Talia. Okay, I think that's right, I think that's right. We'll just make sure all our units can't block. And we need to kill Talia eventually, so hopefully we're going to run into like a another Rite of the Arcane or a Drop the Bomb, or they just have to block our champions. But we could get some pretty good damage here if this goes how I think it's supposed to go. And they have several clunky blockers. Ancient Pep's also very nice at this stage of the game. They are my people, and I am what are we scared of? I guess they could have quick sand, but I don't think they have a way to kill Artelia very easily. So Maybe they run many morph, but that's a little bit of a niche tech for this deck. But that was a pretty good turn for us, I think. Murder the Arcane could kill our Endless Devout. It would be a little bit more problematic. And they could trade that into one of our 5-5s five with their 5-3, but... We're running out of steam as well. But they are also very close to dying. So he is probably going to do a lot of damage this turn. If it was important, they Oof, wow, that's really, really good for them. I think we have to be happy just trading. We push more damage than them here. They get a ton of artifacts, or landmarks though, not artifacts. <laughs> and we could hunt for a stun. I don't know if that'd be very good though. I think I'd rather just have second to in hand. I'm just gonna leave this guy back. He dies to these two. If we have Absolver, we win the game here, I think. Unless they have a quicksand. But they kind of have to play around that. For the rest of the game. I'm very happy to just get rid of one of their- get rid of one of their chump blockers. And it's also one less unit they can attack with to try to get chip damage in later. Okay. We'll let this resolve. Can't do much about it anyways. Talia is still nice and, nice and healthy. Again, it should be pretty difficult for them to kill her. 
So we'll just pop the uh, Ancient Pack, look for Arsenal, Absolver, or Ziggs. Oof. I think it's probably Held Omegas. It's another unit, as well as giving our champions stats and Overwhelm. I don't think we can get much better than that at this point. I won already? Yeah, I think I think we get there. I think we get there. <gasps> oh, that's okay. Oh, I was worried to be like challenge or something. Life steal's a little annoying to be honest. So I think we pass first. No, we need them to block. Our, I mean, and then we need them to attack because we need this to be damaged or else Talia can't get in very easily next turn, right? I don't want Talia to die. I think they're going to take the attack. They're doing a lot of damage. Uh, wait, what? Now we might be able to win. Well, they're going best 20. Card like one damage to everyone would be perfect now. Yeah, right? <laughs> Just like pop up a, a Shurima a Caustic Riff. I don't think we can go down to three. But I don't want to put Talia in danger of a Ready Arcade next turn. No, it won't matter. It won't matter because I'm... Um, She'll be buff and sta statty. So unless they have like an Unleash Energy or something. Because we're going to get the Hell to make a stat center anyways. So she'll be out of range of Ready Arcane. But we need to get rid of this arsenal. We need to either hit our own arsenal or like a Talia stun landmark. Oh gosh, she hit Elusive. Um, That's really bad. We're in a lot of trouble now if we can't kill him soon. Ah, uh, that's not good. Okay, well, we'll play Rockhopper. And then if they play a unit, we can try to manipulate that with Talia. And we can hunt for a stun here to st stun the arsenal, then maybe we're looking good. Like the Explosive Minefield, maybe? This is OP? <laughs> yeah. Ah, that's, that's so bad for us. Man, we were so close, too. I hate losing games like this. I'm like so... Ugh, I don't know what I did wrong, but... Oh. That's not good at this point in the game. I always forget there's a city beneath our feet. We can take an attack here. Talia would kill the arsenal. Oh gosh. Talia technically kills the arsenal. But we lose Talia as well. Maybe I should have just kept other Talia in hand. But um, I think we have to take the attack now and hope they don't have a quick sand. Or otherwise, they just swing and kill us with the elusives next turn. Like, they just block with one of their champions and kill us with Arsenal unless we top deck quick sand. Because there's a chance we win this game if we hit Explosive Minefield there. So I think it was worth the risk there. Yeah, but... Now we're kind of uber far behind. They probably just kill us this turn, to be honest. Unlucky, man. Ah! Ah, I hate losing mirror matches. I feel so bad as a player when that happens. I felt like we were so, so close. I mean, I guess it's part of the reason you play that card, though, right? Like, oh, we hit quicksand anyways, so we didn't have to sacrifice our Talia. <laughs> Man, good game. If I got my own arsenal, it's GG. Yeah. We were close. It was a good match, though. It was a very, very good match. You play, you know, you play the eight mana, eight mana arsenal as a way to change the game. Our opponent got it. It was a good game. I thought there were lots of interesting decisions about the game, so that was fun.
one damage off, yeah. <laughs> if we hit Quicksand one or two turns earlier, when we the Arsenal first attacked, we would have been fine. And it would have stopped the Arsenal from having tough on defense, which Leah would have gotten a lot more damage. Okay, let's see here. You would rage quit after that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bard Nora. Uh, uh, now I've just seen that last game. Arsenal looks kind of nice, but I think we're pitching all of these. Actually, maybe we shouldn't. Hail of the Magus and Talia are both very key point parts of our deck, but... Save Arsenal as a feature? <laughs> I don't know, man. I hate keeping anything over, like, six mana in my opening hand. I'm happy to get Rockberry Shepherd down. They aren't throwing much on the board early so far, so it gives us our chance to set up. Oops, I could have taken an attack there. I missed one damage, that's fine. Hopefully it's fine. We've seen how close one damage is the past few games. <laughs> Two Nora's down is very good, probably. And we avoided the whirling scenes going under the junk construct. Sweet. Post. Okay. So we can we can throw in a lot of damage this turn. I'm spawn killing her. <laughs> Oops, I don't know why I went to block that. Yeah, this is poor Nora. It's like Teemo, man. Everybody casts every card they have in their hand to kill Teemo. If we play Desert Naturalist here, we get a huge attack, and I think it's worth it before they get uber stat buffed too. Rather than waiting for them to get a portal to give to get rid of the vulnerable. Instead we get to push like 10 damage to these guys. That does the pokey stick, but um, I still want to take the attack. If they block with this, we can also pokey stick this later on. Hmm, that's a that's a fun card for Chime Dex. I do I do like that card. Although I don't like Chime Dex in general, I do think that's a fun one. And there's Preservarium. Oh, please don't hit my champions. Oh, double Preservarium. <laughs> Heck yeah. I'll get Endless Devout down as a blocker. Before they do anything else. And we can poke stick the junk construct and then play Preservarium. How many Noras? Uh, I think he's running all three copies, I'd imagine. Oof. Uh, that's a little bit of damage. I think I might be to poke stick here, though. We have to get rid of it anyways, and I don't want it being a blocker for one of these. And, like, there's a chance the portals they hit aren't big enough to kill our 5 5 or our 3 3. Plus, we need to find our champions soon, too. Although, I am happy to trade as much as I can because they, um... We need board space at some point, too. Another origami slicer. One, one. Okay, perfect. I think I'll just swing in... With our three big units here. And I'm happy to trade down. Not like happy happy, but like unnecessary evil in order to eventually get our champions set up. And start whittling them down. Because hopefully we just have more resources than them. Like this guy has two lives. We have a Preservarium on board, a Preservarium in hand. We do have lots of elusives though. With lots of origami damage. That guy's pretty chunky. We might just die to origami this game, to be honest. 
All right, there's one champ. Oh my gosh, should we literally just die? That's a shame. <laughs> okay. Sure. Chime decks, I don't know. I do not enjoy that. That That is like miserable gameplay to me. I don't like chime decks. It was funny, but dang. I wish that game was a little bit more competitive, I thought. It's one of those things where I should have just played around not having Quexian and been like... If I was like a, bit, a little bit more aware, I should have seen they've got a lot of chimes going off. I have to be careful about these elusives and try to shoot one of them with uh, Red Arcane sooner. But uh, I don't know. I guess I was just a little too focused on my own game plan. I'll keep Birdie that came for Jinx. Double Rock Hopper is pretty good too, I think. But I don't know if we want both. I think we'd rather look for some part of our, our more high end cards, like an Endless Devout. Zig's even not atrocious. He's a good blocker. Endless Devout, perfect. I wonder if they're going to take the two damage. Okay, well, I have, to, I have to take the block, I think. Save some damage. Um. I'm a little worried about Lulu, obviously, but if they play Lulu on turn 3, we get to Rite of Arcane. And then the Chompers won't be able to kill us, hopefully. And the question now is if I should take an attack if they play something. I guess it depends on what it is. Okay, probably a sec, sure. I think that's fine. That turn with the Rolling Scenes kind of slowed them down a little bit, hopefully. We can get into... Oof, okay, well, we now have our win con. They can't play Lulu this turn. They do get a Boom Baboon, so I'll just play on this devout. If they want to pull with the Chompers, I'm I'm okay with taking three damage here. Alright, turn four and we haven't taken any damage from Jinx Lulu? Look at this gameplay. He's a good blocker, plus he can kill off the Scrap Scuttler. But this does play into Lulu. If they play Lulu this turn, we get a little toasted. I do want this to die. So, we'll start uh, getting some extra Ziggs damage in, because he can ping the others anyway. And let's give out, now we'll trade, and we could ride their cane a champion. If they play Jinx this turn, I think I'm willing to sacrifice a mana gem just to kill her right away. Hmm, okay, that's also a good play. So, Sneezy Biggle Dust is probably our worst nightmare here. But if it's not Sneezy Biggle Dust, we're still in a good spot. What the heck? That's a little sad. We can't even kill this. So maybe we just kill one of the Chompers. I'm willing, I'm willing to sacrifice the first digs, so we'll just try to save some damage this turn if we can. Like if they pull the one three into the into the restored devout, I think we're okay. And we can just go like this. We have to save as much damage as possible now. I was feeling so good. I thought we were in a pretty decent spot here. I think I'll draw first. We can play Ziggs plus Red Deer next turn. Nice. Okay, that's a good card. 8 health is pretty much dead, though, against Jinx Lulu. Hmm. That's interesting. That might be worth it. Rather than the card draw, we're getting close to Arsenal. So all we need at this turn is to survive and hope we hit Lifesteal, I think. <laughs> Flood the board a little bit. Hope they don't have Jinx slash Chompers. We can kill Jinx if they ever play her. Another Trump attacker would actually be pretty bad, I think. Even a challenge would be pretty bad. I think they just kill us in the open, though. I don't know if Red Dark Cane saves me if I swing in there. I guess maybe that was silly. I think we're dead anyways, though, to be honest.
So we save the most damage if we, um... Hmm. How much damage do we save? Because if we give this guy negative four, he still does two damage from the impact. Okay, so I guess we just give this guy negative four now. We'll block here, here. And go down to two. Seems a little lost. Man, I feel so bad when I lose these games when I'm feeling like I uh, played things well at first. But then I guess I made just a few misplays. I didn't like, um... I don't know. What did I do wrong? I know I was talking about it just a second ago, but like... I didn't... No, that was last game. I don't know. I played this game uh, silly earlier on, I think, at some point. When I didn't prepare for the Trump Attacker. Like, I could have... Because I, I didn't want to use the Red Arcane on the two ones, right? I mean, I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm not tapping out of. I, I don't think it matters if I tap out of red negation. Red negation there. We can't save red negation next turn for when we play Arsenal, so we die anyways. So I just want to get our units out. Uh, but unfortunate. Man, took some tough L's. All right, that's probably gonna be it for the day, though. I hope you guys enjoyed. Some fun games for sure, even if some silly, silly losses at the end to like Nora, Bard, Aggro <laughs> with the Origami Slicers. Uh, but yeah. Uh, let me know if you guys have any fun decks or anything you've been playing. I'm still uh, interested to try a few more new decks before the new February updates and like competitive updates, like the Daily Rumbles and stuff. I'm so excited for that. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'll see you guys around. Thanks so much for watching.